from medicine out of a saddlebag to heart transplants to surgery with gamma rays. The practice of medicine has come a long way the last 100 years, and the Harris County Medical Society has been at the forefront of those changes, working to ensure the highest standards of ethical medical practice and serving as an advocate for physicians and their patients. In 1903, Harris County was a thriving area of about 65,000 people. A major railroad hub, site of a planned new inland port, and at the cutting edge of an oil boom from nearby Spindletop. Houston was a progressive city with all the latest advances, telephones, the newfangled automobile, and 26 miles of paved roads. But medicine was still a frontier. In 1900, there were no medical standards. Doctors uh, went to medical school right after high school. There were not many treatments. Many drugs were uh, not invented so that most diseases were treated with the same bad tasting medicines. There were no standards for purification of water, air control, public health, mosquito control. It was a total different world than it is today. In the summer of 1903, a yellow fever epidemic threatened Harris County. A group of physicians got together on a sweltering July night to talk about what could be done to stop it. The result of the meeting was the Harris County Medical Society, a group of doctors who dedicated themselves to promoting the highest standards of medical practice for patients, physicians, and the community. In 1903, the only hospital in the Bio City was St. Joseph's Infirmary, a five-room converted cottage on Franklin Street. It had one ward, and two beds. A larger hospital was desperately needed. In 1905, with the support from the society, St. Joseph's expanded and soon added a training school for nurses. There were four medical schools in Texas in 1909, but a national commission determined that only the University of Texas Department of Medicine in Galveston was fit to continue the work of training physicians. Another of the Society's earliest actions was to help create the State Board of Medical Examiners. This pioneering effort in 1907 created the first standard for education and training for every doctor in Texas. In 1915, HCMS formed the Houston Academy of Medicine to establish a medical library so members could have access to all the latest scientific and medical advances. Tuberculosis was one of the deadliest health threats in the early 1900s. In 1917, HCMS teamed up with the Houston Anti-Tuberculosis League to establish the Houston Tuberculosis Hospital. Physicians donated their time to help care for needy patients. As doctors learned more about how diseases were transmitted, HCMS pressed hard for more public health laws and for all children to be taught health in schools. In 1917, the winds of war in Europe set off a crossfire that brought the United States into the war. Volunteers, including 60 Harris County Medical Society members, lined up to fight for their country. Six of those doctors would not come home. After the war, HCMS convinced lawmakers to establish the first State Board of Health and a Medical Practices Act that set higher standards for all Texas doctors. During the 20s, insulin was used for diabetes for the first time, and the electroencephalogram recorded brain waves. In Harris County, the first traffic light and air conditioner made their debuts and people still swam in blissful ignorance in Buffalo Bio. As late as the 1930s, we still did not understand uh, contagious diseases. Remember that penicillin came along during and after World War II. Being out at night, being bitten by all sorts of mosquitoes was commonplace. Nearly 20 years earlier, a Swiss immigrant donated some lushly wooded acres to build a new hospital. In 1925, Herman Hospital opened its doors. 
It seemed far from town at the time and had to be fenced to keep the wild animals out. No one could have imagined that this area would one day become one of the finest medical centers in the world. In 1926, the Society published its first bulletin, the precursor of today's Harris County Physician Newsletter, to keep physicians up to date on the latest medical and society news. Houston managed to escape the worst of the Great Depression, and by 1937, the Medical Society continued to set standards by establishing doctor fees. Office calls were $2. House calls were $3. Night calls were $5. The 1940s found war raging across Europe and the Pacific. Harris County physicians volunteered to go. At home, the society helped open one of the county's first blood banks. Working with the Red Cross and the Harris County Civilian Defense, HCMS volunteers collected, processed, and lined up to donate their blood. In 1943, a special bond election was held to buy a heavily wooded piece of Herman Park from the city to build the Texas Medical Center. It was a bitter campaign but in November of 1945, the Texas Medical Center was officially chartered by the state. HCMS physicians played critical roles in making that happen. Ground was broken for the Texas Medical Center in 1948. Houston got its first medical school, Baylor College of Medicine. In 1949, the Houston Academy of Medicine combined its collection with the Baylor College of Medicine Library and moved it to the heart of the Texas Medical Center. Within five years, the library moved again, this time into its new state-of-the-art home, the Jesse H. Jones Library Building. The library is now the largest medical library in the Southwest, serving Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and New Mexico. public health continued to be a top priority. When the Gulf Coast Poison Control Center was in trouble, HCMS stepped in and took over to ensure that every resident would have a place to call for help. Polio struck thousands of healthy children in Harris County, dependent on iron lungs to breathe for them. With limbs now withered and useless, the children were often taken out of the sun of a hospital courtyard. The great miracle of the 50s was the end of the era of the iron lung and the vaccine that helped stop the crippling disease that had gripped the world with fear. In 1962, Harris County Medical Society members led the Victory Over Polio campaign. It was a huge cooperative effort. Over 200 immunization stations were set up throughout the county and sugar cubes with drops of the life-saving vaccine were doled out to children, adults, police officers, and even a couple of kids on horseback. At the same time, Harris County's population passed the one million mark, the highest population in the state. This was Mr. M, our millionth resident. Remarkably, 97% of Harris County residents were immunized in the Victory Over Polio campaign. To show appreciation, citizens tossed quarters into ice cream cartons, donating over $125,000. Continuing its role as a leader in public health education, in 1962, HCMS sponsored the Houston Health Fair. More than 130,000 people came to learn and see these free exhibits. The 1960s also brought the first free public first aid classes. Thanks to HCMS and the American Red Cross, county residents learned how to handle everyday emergencies. In 1969, the society opened its first medical museum on the second floor of the Museum of Natural Science. For the next 21 years, this popular hands-on changing exhibit taught countless children and adults about the miracles of the human body and medicine. 
All this was made possible through donations raised in the Victory Over Polio campaign, a grant from Houston Endowment, and generous contributions from Harris County physicians. In 1967, the city of Houston turned to HCMS for help to fix the broken emergency medical service system. I remember vividly as a medical student and intern the ambulances were run by the funeral parlors, sometimes private enterprises, and multiple private ambulance groups who would fight over um, both the dead bodies so that they could get a funeral and very little uh, care given to people during transport. It was really a mess. HCMS studied the problems and recommended that the Houston Fire Department take over the city's emergency services. It also recommended standards for staffing, training, vehicle and equipment needs, which the city adopted. Since then, HCMS continues its support by providing advice to the city to ensure quality emergency medical services for all Houston. The Texas Medical Center's reputation continued to attract the best and the brightest. In 1971, the University of Texas Medical School at Houston opened its doors with 325 students. HCMS saw its mission expand to a world stage in 1972 when a great earthquake hit Managua, Nicaragua. The Medical Society mobilized supplies, medicines, and a team of physicians to go to Nicaragua to help. Since then, HCMS has responded to numerous emergency medical requests throughout Central America. In the early 70s, in response to numerous problems in the quality and supply of blood, the Medical Society took steps to ensure quality blood supplies to area patients by establishing the Gulf Coast Regional Blood Center. We established the Blood Center back in uh, 1975. And that remains one of our biggest missions is to promote uh, blood donations uh, within, within the county and within the, within the city to help keep the blood supply uh, up to standard. The blood center is responsible for providing donated blood and blood components to patients being treated in more than 200 health care facilities in a 24 county area. The 70s also marked the first reported cases of AIDS. AIDS quickly turned into a frightening epidemic with virtually no educational information available, HCMS published one of the very first guides on this terrifying disease, AIDS, a guide for survival. It contained plain facts on how you could and could not be infected. It went a long way to educate not only the public, but went a long way to educate the physicians of this community. And the Medical Society was one of the first to take such a leadership role. Since then, more than two and a half million copies of the award-winning book have been printed and distributed around the world. Also in the 80s, the economy tanked out. The oil bust, savings and loan and bank failures left thousands jobless and many without health care. The Medical Society saw the need and created its recession distressed program. A thousand HCMS physicians volunteered their services providing free medical care for over 10,000 residents. In 1983, President Ronald Reagan honored HCMS by bestowing a Point of Light Award for the Society's Recession Relief Program. To provide more health education, HCMS sent its health adventure trailer into area schools. With thousands of annual visits and a long waiting list, it was clear that a permanent museum was needed. In 1996, that dream became a reality. HCMS proudly opened the John P. McGovern Museum of Health and Medical Science. More than 200,000 visitors come to the museum each year to learn from interactive exhibits, such as the amazing Body Pavilion. The museum also provides hands-on science classes, videos, summer camps, trauma prevention, teacher training, educational material, and curriculums 
for age pre-K through 12th grade. HCMS commitment to public health education has brought new partnerships with groups throughout the community, including the Houston Bar Association. Doctors and attorneys team up in classrooms around the county to teach fifth graders the consequences of alcohol and drug abuse. Did anyone tell me what, what are some of the bad things that bad drugs can do to you? They make you high. The back row there. Uh, holding your brain. Is it what? Holding your brain. The hole in your brain. The Medical Society also partners with numerous other groups, like the City of Houston, to help former gang members return to mainstream society by removing their tattoos. HCMS physicians work with the Boy Scouts to provide camp physicals to underprivileged children. They distribute free bicycle safety helmets, support area science fairs, and encourage immunizations for all children. HCMS brings together city and county health departments, public safety officers, and emergency response officials for public health and disaster preparedness meetings. Through a century of the Medical Society's history, its mission has remained unchanged. I think the most important mission is to uh, promote the highest standard of practice of medicine in, in the community, uh, and again, to serve the public. One result of that work was the Texas Patient Protection Act, passed by state lawmakers in 1997. We in Texas, and led by real visionaries from the Harris County Medical Society, were participants in uh, uh, the Patient's Bill of Rights. Uh, and Texas was the very first state to say it is okay to raise questions about your HMO. The Patient Protection Act is the most comprehensive managed care reform in the nation. It established an independent review process for patients to resolve medical questions and disputes. In 1999, HCMS joined forces with the Texas Medical Association, other Texas medical societies, and the American Medical Association to block a merger of two large insurance companies, a merger that would have created a monopoly that would have allowed one company to dominate 66% of Houston's commercial HMO market. If you cannot find the health care you need here, it doesn't exist. Over the last hundred years, Harris County physicians have distinguished themselves in every field and specialty. From the first prenatal intensive care unit in the 50s, to the first mechanical heart pump, coronary bypass, first heart transplant, and vascular surgery, Harris County physicians have pioneered tremendous developments in chemotherapy, trauma, and now non-invasive, non-operative surgeries, thanks in part to the amazing advances in technology. A hundred years, times have changed, and HCMS and its physicians continue to be at the forefront of those changes. In 1903, when the society was first formed, the society was mostly composed of, of white men. Now, 50% uh, of medical, entering medical school classes are women now. We have more minorities, we have more international graduates as well. From its original 65 members in 1903 to over 9,000 members today, the Harris County Medical Society is a reflection of the international and diverse community we live in. Looking toward a second century of service, the Harris County Medical Society faces many challenges, from shortages in nursing to trauma care, the Medicare crisis, insurance payment reform, medical malpractice and liability, and the growing number of patients who are uninsured or have limited access to health care. There are solutions to those issues, and those solutions come when informed people come together and say, what must we do for those people who need us to provide their health care? The Harris County Medical Society will continue to rise to meet those challenges for over a century it has created a legacy of service and caring, and a legacy of the highest standards of excellence and ethical medical practices that will lead us well through the next century.